Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. All this was done so that God and you can come into a relationship as father and son, father and daughter. Not that you can claim to be a part of a large religious group. God does not want members. God wants sons. God does not want grandsons. God wants sons. That's why there is no subscription to this that you can purchase with money. Your subscription is bought through your faith. The faith in what Jesus has done for you. Today because of the blood. Look at the mercy of God. God opened up the way by tearing the veil which the Bible calls the flesh of, the, of Jesus and opened up a way for us to enter into the Holy of Holies with confidence that we will not be killed. Number two, we will be heard. Amen. Hallelujah. So your prayer life will be transformed if you begin to understand this. That's why you, this understanding of the blood is so important. I come with the knowledge and understanding of the power there is invested in the blood of Jesus that now gives me access into the presence of God and also gives me the confidence that God will answer my cry. Somebody say amen. All right, so he made us righteous. Say, God made me right. He did, how did he do it? He did it through Jesus Christ when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. How did he deliver us from the penalty of sin? Through his blood, okay? For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God. People are made right with God. Please understand that, right? Mark that, circle that word right. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. My God, I pray that this truth will hit you like a ton of bricks and will explode in your heart like an atomic bomb, giving you revelation and understanding that builds confidence and boldness to come into his presence. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. Now, friend, listen to me. The blood of Jesus is no ordinary blood. It's very special blood. Luke chapter 1 verse 35. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, talking to Mary, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and will be called the Son of God. Every baby that is born today to anyone is a sinner. By birth. Don't look at me so strange. <laughs> Everyone that you are a sinner, not because you sinned. You sin because you're a sinner. So everyone that is born after the manner of Adam is born a sinner. But Jesus, the Bible says, when he is born, he shall be holy. That means there is no sin in the birth of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. No sin, right? The baby to be born will be holy and he shall be called the son of God. If Jesus' parents were Mary and Joseph, then his blood would have been the same as you and I. Just normal human blood like ours. But this was not the case with Jesus. Joseph was not his father. Jesus' blood not only had the human side of his mother, but had the, had the power of his father God. Reinhard Bonke said this, Jesus did not have an earthly father. God and man became one in the womb of Virgin Mary. That's powerful. God and man became one in the womb of Virgin Mary. Therefore, the blood was sinless. The blood was not contaminated by sin. 
So his blood was sinless blood. Hello? Are you with me? Because the blood of a sinless man had to be shed for the remission of the sins of mankind. So this is the secret of the power of the blood of Jesus. It has the, the, just one drop of his blood is powerful enough to pay the price for the entire human race. Leviticus chapter seven, verse 17 verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood, watch this, it is the blood that maketh an atonement for soul. Now, I told you, atonement means what? Covering. Well, the blood of Jesus does not atone, but the blood of Jesus remits. There's a difference between the blood of animals and the blood of Jesus. Both have been given as far as sin is concerned. One has the power to cover, but the other has the power to remit, which means wipe clean with no trace of the past. That's why he said, he said, I will not remember your sins. That doesn't mean that God has a memory problem. He chose to forget. So don't remind him about your past. Because he says there's no reference of it in heaven here. I think it was Corey Ten Boom who said in her book that uh, after your sins have been forgiven, don't go throw a fishing line to fish for what? What did he say? Yeah, no, no fishing in the sea of forgetfulness. That's right. Amen? God has forgotten it. Why do you want to remind him of that? The in listen to me. Listen to me carefully. What is the name of the devil in the book of Revelation? One of the names? Accuser of the brethren. What is the job of an accuser? Always trying to accuse you of something. So he's reminding you and trying to accuse you with those thoughts. Say it's under the blood. That doesn't mean now you can go ahead and do whatever you like to do. Come on. It's not giving license for us to live as we please. See, true freedom is to live as a slave to Jesus. True freedom is true surrender to Jesus. So you live, in the, you live your life under the shadow and the supervision and the covering of Jesus. That's true freedom. Okay? So what are we saying now? Let's, let's go further. It is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. I want to read this again from the NLT. It says this. This is awesome. For the life of the body is in its blood. Okay? I've given you the blood for the, on the altar to do things. Two. Num number one. To purify you. Number one. The blood purifies. And making you right with the Lord. Hallelujah. The blood is essential to make a person right with God. See, blood is the only currency that has relevance in the spiritual realm. Your money, your wealth, your pedigree, nothing amounts to anything in the spiritual realm. The only thing that is recognized, for example, you go to another country, you try to buy something with your rupees, what will they say? Sorry. That's not recognized here. We can't sell you this. Because it has no value in that country. But you come back here, it has got value. So your money, your wealth, your name has value in this earth. And you think because in this earth we've been taught and we've been raised in cultures where we think anything can be bought and done through money. So we think we can deal with the sin issue also with money. That's why we see a lot of people trying to ease their conscience, go give huge amounts of monies to their gods. Talk to me somebody. Is that true? That's right. They go on pilgrimage. They hurt themselves. They roll down the mountain or the hill, you know, and they, you know, and they think all this is in, the, in this realm. I'm not making fun of anything because of the lack of understanding and knowledge. People do this because they think these things count in the realm of the spirit. No, they, none of these can deal with the sin issue. The only currency that is accepted or, or recognized in the realm of the spirit is blood. 
the blood of animals has some power. It can cover. But it's only the blood of Jesus that can cleanse a man in his conscience from sin. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. My friend, I'm telling you, I'm laboring a lot this morning. I'm praying that God will give you an understanding that will change the way you approach him in your prayer life and in your walk with him. So the blood purifies. The blood makes you right with the Lord. It is the blood. Listen to this. It is the blood given in exchange. There's an exchange happening. When you purchase something, what happens? You give money, you get an exchange. It's exchange with the object, product, right? You go to the uh, you go to cell phone shop, you give them money, it's exchange for the cell phone. So also in the realm of the spirit, it says it is the blood given in exchange for a life that made purification possible. So it's a blood that purchases purification. Hallelujah. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Only blood can make atonement for the soul. That is why a lamb's blood was used as an atonement for sin. Now look at this. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 13. Are you learning anything this morning? I pray you would. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify it to the purging of the flesh. The blood of animals only deals with the flesh. The carnal sight. It's a temporary fix. But Jesus is the lamb that God provided for us. John chapter 1 verse 29. It says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. The lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. See, you've got to understand, Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. All this was done so that God and you can come into a relationship as father and son, father and daughter. Not that you can claim to be a part of a large religious group. God wants, does not want members. God wants sons. God does not want grandsons. God wants sons. That's why there's no subscription to this that you can purchase with money. Your subscription is bought through your faith. The faith in what Jesus has done for you, okay? Now, he was a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. His blood is no ordinary blood. It was holy and powerful to pay for the sin of the entire human race, past, present, and future. Now, let's go to Hebrews 9.12, NLT. I want you to look at a few words here. This is very, very important. With his own blood. Everybody say own blood. own blood. Every time the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, he did not go with his own blood. He went with the blood of bulls and goats. But here, Jesus is going with his own blood, not the blood of goats and calves. He entered the most holy place once for all time. And secured our redemption forever. Hallelujah. I'm redeemed forever. No more sacrifices have to be made. No more blood has to be shed. Jesus paid the price. Period. I am redeemed forever. Hallelujah to Jesus. I said hallelujah to Jesus. You know, in the entire creation of God, we are the most envious. We are envied even by the angels. As powerful as Michael is, the archangel. As powerful and as in close proximity as Gabriel is. None of them have been made in the likeness and image of God. We're the only creation that have been made in the image and likeness of God. So we're the envy of the universe. Wow, that, that should blow your mind. Can you understand how precious you are? How, see, but how does the devil convince people that they're good for nothing, they're useless, and they live in depression, they take antidepressants, they're discouraged in life, they try to commit suicide, and many have committed suicide. 
One of the latest news, I mean, yesterday, I think I was re reading this, uh, it said this 28-year-old girl, 28 years, who's doing really well, is so depressed, she asked for euthanasia. Because she couldn't see any future. Because she thought she's good for nothing. Jesus, the Lord God Almighty, died for her. See how the devil is convincing you. And it all happens, we wrestle not against and the battle is where? In the mind. It's telling you there is no future for you. It's telling you there is no way out. It's telling you that's the end of the road. It's telling you there's no hope for you, no scope for you. You will not make it in life. Listen to me. That's the lie of the devil coming from the pit of hell. You got to know if Jesus is for you. And you've been in the, well, the belly of a whale for three days. God can still spit you out. And still be alive. I don't know how that man survived, Jonah. But even in the belly of the fish, he was communicating with God. <laughs> Nothing is impossible with God. I don't know where you are today, how depressed or discouraged you are regarding your career, regarding your job, or regarding your, you know, your family situation, or your marriage situation, or your children's situation. Let me tell you, don't let the devil convince you there is no way out. There is a way out. And the way is called... Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, I am the way. Where there is no way, God will make a way. That's why he called himself, I am the way. So if you can take your eyes off your problem, if you can take your eyes off what the enemy is showing you, if you can shut your ears to what the devil is saying and say, shut up, devil. I can't see where I'm heading, but I know I can see Jesus. And he has seen where I'm supposed to be. I was not born without a destiny. I was not born without a purpose. God birthed me on this planet with a purpose and destiny in mind. Somebody say amen. amen. There is a destiny I have to fulfill. There is a destiny you have to fulfill. So don't persist on what you want. Yield to God and say, what do you want, Lord? Because true fulfillment is not in just having a lot of wealth. True fulfillment is not just having a big name. True fulfillment is not having labels after you. How many know who's that famous, uh, oh my God, designer? Hmm. Kate, Kate, what is that? Yeah, Kate Spade. How did she die? Such a big name. Everybody in the world was, were buying their product, her products. She died committed suicide, I think, if I'm not wrong. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, see? Nothing in this world can give you true satisfaction. What can give you satisfaction is when you're on the path to fulfilling your destiny. If you know you're in God, hallelujah to Jesus, in the lion's den you will praise God because you know you are still fulfilling the purpose of God. In the ship that was in a, in, a, in a storm, for 14 days and nights, there was no light, no sun. It was dark and cloudy, and the boat was rocked so much that they lost hope of living anymore. In the midst of that, Paul said, the angel of God stood with me. That's fulfilling purpose. That's fulfilling destiny. Not just having a lot of money, not just having a lot of wealth, not just becoming famous. And let me tell you, God is not against that. And I'm not knocking that, okay? God, but see, I don't pursue that. That has to pursue me. That's what I preach. That's what I believe with all my heart. So if I pursue God and the destiny that God has for me, money cannot but seek me. Wealth cannot but seek me. Fame cannot but seek me. It follows me. It's attracted to me. Why? Because when I'm fulfilling the purpose of God, God knows the resources I need to do that and fulfill. So he'll cause the resources to be drawn toward me. Don't be worried about money. Be concerned about your destiny. Don't be worried about your new home. It'll come. But ful fulfill your destiny. Don't insist on, this is what I decided. This is where I'm going. No. You decide. And the Bible says, commit your way to the Lord. And say, Lord, I have decided 
but I've decided to follow you. This is what I feel is right. This is what everybody is saying is right, but is it really right for me? Is this the path I need to take? I don't know how I got onto all this now. Somebody needed to hear this. This has nothing to do with the blood, by the way. All right, let's get back. Okay, okay, okay. Now, <clears throat> this is also very important. Hebrews 9.14, please. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify your consciences. The blood of bulls and goats, the Bible said, dealt with the flesh. Dealt with the flesh. But the blood of Jesus deals with your conscience. And God desires that every one of us that is genuinely born again begins to develop a righteousness consciousness. Nobody that lives with sin consciousness can ever really make a mark for God. Can never really experience the power of God in their lives. Because they're always focused on themselves and how frail they are, how weak they are, how incompetent they are, and how unqualified they are. So they always disqualify themselves and think, I don't think God will answer my prayer. No. My focus is not me. My focus is Jesus. My focus is what he did for me. The blood gives me entrance into the very presence of God. Somebody say amen. So it deals with the, sin, the consciousness from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. The blood of Jesus deals and purifies our conscience. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus purifies and deals with our conscience. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19. Having therefore brethren. This is a very important scripture. Having therefore brethren boldness. Everybody shout boldness. boldness. Enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. He's saying God is inviting us into the holy of holies. But he said by the blood of Jesus. What qualifies me? What makes me think I will succeed? It's not because I'm highly educated. It's not because I'm skilled. It's because I can come into his presence. And I know that God answers my cry. My confidence is not in me, my achievements, my intellect, my education. But my confidence is in him. Hallelujah. He opens the door nobody can open. He shuts the door that nobody can shut. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. See, education is important, my friends. Don't get me wrong. We need to be well-educated, trained, skilled. But a couple of things I want you to know. It's the favor of God that lifts a man up. You look at anybody that is really blessed in life, you will see there's an unseen hand behind that. That you can't really point at. Is an unseen hand. Whatever he touched, it began to prosper. So the Bible says, Potiphar knew that there was something upon this man. And what that was is the presence. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. The results that Joseph produced was evidence that there was something beyond the natural working for him. That's the proof you and I need to have. That's the testimony we should carry. Not just our education. See, when God wanted Moses to build the tabernacle, he said, uh, he gave him the, the, the design, he gave him the instructions, the measurements, everything, and he told him exactly how it should be built. Then he said, get Bazilliel. And the Bible says, God blessed him with the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That he became, he excelled above every other craftsman in the nation. What will elevate you? What will separate you? What will take you into prominence is that unseen hand of God behind you. And that's what we need. Thank God for all the education. Get the best you can. But don't rely on it. 
there are many people highly educated without a job. You know, when they go for interview, what they tell? You're too qualified. That's a, dis that's a disadvantage. You're too educated for us. You got too many degrees behind you, behind your name, you know. So education in itself does not guarantee. Oh, I got to go to the best university. Yeah, true. Nothing wrong. But let God lead you. Because today, the world recognizes Harvard as the, one of the best universities in the world. They're creating, they're producing idiots today. <laughs> I'm telling you, idiots. Is that true? Talk to me, somebody. No sense. But the sad story is, those universities, the most prominent ones in America, were actually started by pastors. Even Howard. It was a Christian college. But today, look where it's gone. Because they moved God out to the picture. We got to be careful. Friend, we got to know that Jesus is our only source of blessing. All right? So, watch this. We'll do this and we'll finish over here today. Romans 3, 24 to 26. I know I'm going through a teaching, but I'm also exhorting you and I'm also teaching you and encouraging you. God in His grace... We did this, but I want to repeat this to close, okay? Freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he f freed us from the penalty of our sins. God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair. Praise God and praise the Lord. Amen? Now, all I'm saying is, Let's begin to rely on the power there is in the blood of Jesus to cleanse us and declare us sinless in the sight of God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Now with the help of the Holy Spirit, live a life that is pleasing to Him. And when you live this life, and with this, I think with this uh, issue, I will close. Remember, many times we judge things based on the kind of teaching and the environment we live in. I said this before some time back, and I want to highlight this. There is what is called illegal, and there is what is called immoral. According to our belief system and according to the Word of God, in the beginning, Adam was created and only one woman was created, not several. So don't talk to me about David and Solomon. Okay, listen to me carefully. Man is joined to one woman, one woman is joined to one man. That's God's design. Are you with me? Okay. If you do anything outside of that, it's called immoral in the eyes of God. Today, if somebody was living and had a, you know, a girlfriend or a boyfriend, and they were spending time together, and today living together has become very common. Now, while that's going on, the guy's seeing another girl on the side and having another setup in another city. While they travel to other cities, they have all these things, you know, happening. Now, can he go to the police and say, look, can you arrest my husband or my so-called husband? No. Why? According to the law of the land, it's not illegal. But according to God's law, it is immoral. So when you judge stuff, look at it very carefully. Our standard is not what the law of the land says. He said, this is what Jesus said. You have put too much weight on them by making people follow the laws that were created by man and not by God. And you put too much burden on the people because they created so many laws. And so you got to understand even laws. There are moral laws. There are civic laws. And how God looks at the civic laws may be very different to the way the government looks at. 
you might have broken something in the civic law, you may not be punished by God, but you may be punished by the civil government. Are you with me? So don't be quick in judging people. But when you do judge yourself, judge yourself rather than judging others and say, how do I stand before the Lord? Are you with me? And if there is something that you feel convicted about, apply the blood. Ask God to forgive you and let the blood cleanse you so that once again, you come back into right standing with God. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus.